everyone, my name is Dawn Schiebel and this is, uh, these, this is Better Angels, the firefighters of 9-11 and it's portraits of all 343 firefighters that died on 9-11. Um, never in the history of firefighting have this many firefighters died in one fell swoop and this was a gut blow to firefighters around the world and non-firefighters like me. Mm -hmm. uh, I was... Uh, you know, I was instantly a New Yorker again that day, though I left there a couple years before, or five years before, but all day long I was a New Yorker. And when mm -hmm. someone came on TV about three o'clock in the afternoon, that's Colorado time, mm -hmm. someone came on and said, we think that more than 300 firefighters died today. And that's when I sobbed. Mm -hmm. I'd just been shocked, I'd been stunned, but I was, I just sobbed. Out. And then 12 days later, the New York Times printed a two-page spread with all of their pictures. And when I saw that, I went, oh, someday I can do something with that. And I folded it up and I put it away. And I, because I didn't know what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to someday honor the firefighters. Mm -hmm. And it's about, I don't know, five years later, mm -hmm. I went, oh, I'm going to paint them on burn blocks of wood. So you painted all of these? All of these. And I started with those terrible, terrible little pictures in the New York Times, you know, dot printed and all that. And mm -hmm. slowly I got better pictures along the way and I also became a better painter along the way. And so most of them were repainted two or three times before it was done. How long did it take you to complete all of them? You know, once upon a time I computed about 3,000 hours for the painting and 3,000 hours for the business part, but then but then I repainted 88 of them after I had that 3,000 hour estimate, so mm -hmm. a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, that's a I lot of time. Um, so, would you like to show us what... what Some of them? Well, I'll start with, yeah. the, with the... This is the chaplain. Okay. So, Father Judge, he knew from five years old that he wanted to be a chaplain. He was the fire chaplain. He was a very loving. Um, and his death is 0001. He was not the first to die. He was doing uh, last rites on people. When, when, so he was caught in the collapse of the last rites? He, he arrived. He was, in the, he was in the lobby of the North Tower. The person mm -hmm. running the command post in the North Tower was his twin brother who looks exactly the same. And they've been playing that French movie again on TV, and you see his brother in that movie. And mm -hmm. his brother survived, but his brother just says the judge was just praying nonstop. I mean, there were 200 people dead in the lobby when they arrived from fire shooting down the elevator shafts. So he did last rites where, and then he did last rites on the ground. And he was the first firefighter who died on 9 11, Danny Sir. And he was killed by a jumper. And after that, they stopped coming in from the plaza they did below. Mm -hmm. um, and then his crew, his engine company and maybe his ladder company, they then carried his body, probably ceremonially, off site to where they were taking people. And when they did that, the towers came down where they had been standing. So now that way, he had just saved all of their lives with his own. Anyway, Father Judge was just much beloved. 71, there's a 72-year-old on the end who's the deputy commissioner. Otherwise, you have to retire at 65 in the FDNY. Mm -hmm. And uh, this guy, just because he's right here, mm -hmm. just the week before, he won a quarter million dollars in a brand new Jeep and a Fox reality show. Really? Angel. And he was already pre-chosen and I think pre-photographed to be in their annual firehouse fights. So he went from like fairy dust sprinkled life to one week later he was dead here. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you one more over here. Okay. Since I talked about you had to retire at 65. Mm -hmm. This guy was inches from retirement. He never wanted to. He's the father and his son is right next to him on the right. And uh, Joseph Angelino, when he joined the FDNY, John F. Kennedy was president. <laughs> okay, that was a few years, right? But he was looking mandatory retirement in the face, and he really, and he's in rescue one. I mean, it was a very tough company. They have mm -hmm. big, it's a big job company. He was known for always carrying every piece of equipment that you had to do, no matter how many stairs you had to climb. Mm -hmm. But he arrived with no equipment that day because he was off duty, I think, for a medical checkup over in the headquarters. Well, maybe but when, when, anyway. Oh, probably 25 to 30 percent of these people were not on duty. I, I heard a story on the news this morning. I think about a guy who was stopped at the tunnel and he ran all the way through the tunnel. Is this him? This is him, Stephen Siller. 
and his family then is a Brooklyn firefighter, his company you know, he called in, mm -hmm. he went there, got his gear, drove mm -hmm. his truck to the tunnel, couldn't get in, put on his 65 pounds of gear and ran five kilometers to the tunnel, the tunnel oh, came out a couple blocks south of the World Trade Center. I don't think we know what happened to him after that because his is one of the bodies we never found. But his family uh, started a foundation, several of these guys started foundations, his is probably the biggest one. Um, and it may have started the next year, it's called Tunnel to Towers, mm. and they redo his run, but they also have satellite runs around the country and maybe even around the world. Someone suggested to me yesterday, well, we should maybe start a run in Trinidad, and mm -hmm. I think that would be cool, mm -hmm. a 5K yeah. run here. And they raise money for disabled firefighters, but also for disabled veterans. Their foundation, as of last year, had raised $250 million which they spend giving smart homes to veterans who've lost their legs and smart wheelchairs and prosthetics and all things involved with, you know, being able to rehab and have as normal a life as you get. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation, very, very, very cool organization. Is there is there a story behind um, the, the wood that you used? Because uh, I see it's we had to make it. So I had to figure out how to burn the edges and not the center. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. once I got that, oh, I'm gonna paint them on burn blocks of wood, you know, so I had to, in a very nice metaphor, they protected each other in that process. So the only way to burn the edges and not the center and not get the cover discolored by smoke is to drill a hole through the center of each block and skewer them. I was going to put a painting there later so I could cover that hole up when it mm -hmm. got filled in, mm -hmm. but then skewer them on metal all thread rods. I put a washer between each one. I just remembered that washer detail the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I torqued them so they weren't all quite square. Oh, I and see. I had this kick ass intern from CU Boulder, Rachel, and she did all the prep and she burned them and had a lot of fun doing that. We were at a friend's log yard in Boulder mm -hmm. using his acetylene torch. Mm -hmm. And then all these other things had to happen. There was about 150 hours to prepare the wood before the painting could start. But the wood is the context. Mm -hmm. And the wood, the color that came out in the wood That's beautiful. is gorgeous. And the wood is very blonde. It starts with this very, you know, uninteresting looking. And it just, I used the wood I always use for painting, but it was the perfect choice that I didn't know. What wood is that? It's a Baltic birch, mm -hmm. so it's a very high grade ply with very thin layers. Mm -hmm. That means that the wood burned in layers, and if I'd used a solid block of wood, it would have burned differently. Mm -hmm. So it just all, and the fire approached more than I thought originally, so the portraits also wound up smaller than I thought. But even that wound up perfect, I think. So all these serendipitous things yeah. just sort of it's, it's almost cosmic. Happened. It, well, it, yeah. It, yeah. And then I, in a hundred paintings in, I'm like, I can't, this is way too big, I can't do this on my own, and who am I? I have no legitimacy within the fire community, I have nothing. But it was really too big for me to to pull it off, so I went, did my research and went in search of a fire partner, and mm -hmm. partnered with the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation. And we have no formal arrangement anymore, but we're still friends and we still help each other. But they signed up with me and we spent a year, they weren't didn't actually fund it, but together we tried to find funding and we eventually got funding and we had a 10 city tour. So, and again, how many are there? 343, and this again, the only way it comes out evenly. It's seven rows of 49 columns. Mm -hmm. It's, it's again, another one of those. Well, they're, 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 the top row isn't too tall to see and the bottom row isn't too low to see. Mm -hmm. It's just... No. They're absolutely wonderful. What, what, what medium do you use? Tommy, I met his mother. Oh, you did? And she he, gave me a video of him. Mm -hmm. And he, I know he's better looking than my painting. And he was one of yeah. People's Magazine 100 Most Eligible Bachelors one year. He was a rodeo rider. He had his dog. He trained to do all sorts. I don't know what kind of tricks, but some stuff. And like many of these guys, he was often a firefighter or a policeman or an extra on The Sopranos or Law and Order or one of those New York shows. Mm -hmm. A lot of these guys did that on the side. And uh, you know, had dreams of a speaking role later. But Tommy loved being a firefighter. So this. The story um, for him, I think his dad might have been retired after the NY too, and his brother was in the fire department. His dad promised the mother, we're going to find Tommy and bring him home. So the brother is down working on the pile with everybody else, and the father is on top of Ten House, which is the fire station that's right there. Mm -hmm. It's an old two-story building, but it's right there. And he's up there for days with his high-res binoculars. And maybe around day four or day five, just looking through the smoke, 
he finds a Rescue 3 helmet. And he lets them know on the ground where he spotted the helmet. Mm -hmm. And they go there, but it can't go under. It's still too hot. They can't even lower a camera. They put a traffic cone on the spot. And when they can go back, that's where they find Tommy. Mm. Mm. So. He looks young. Yeah, um, and again, I don't think he's much more handsome than his picture. He's in his 30s, I think, but he lived oh, okay. a very full life. A very yeah. full life. I mean, yeah. the youngest is up there in the corner. He's 22, and I think there's a couple other 22-year-olds mm -hmm. here. Um, so do you know the personal stories of all of these? No, 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 no. no. Not, and there's a few I remember, but mm -hmm. I, six or more years ago, I spent a couple of weeks researching all of them, whatever online things I could find, and mm -hmm. what the New York Times did, their stories that mm -hmm. they had done, and the National Fallen Firefighters Memorial page on their site, and and uh, and I wrote short anecdotal stories about all of them. And some of them I found very little information to write mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but I needed to do that so that then I could have something to post every day, because mm -hmm. I'm not an automatic, and they're posted in order by company. So the stories go with the men that they responded with, whereas the wall is alphabetical so that you can find them. Yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. But um, so some of the stories I remember because I tell people and I still get new stories from people about them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't have all of them stuck in my head yeah. at all. Yeah. Well, I couldn't I, imagine. And some I have the stories, but I don't know. What, I mean, I know which, for instance, there's two guys on this wall and I couldn't offhand tell you where, who they were. There's two guys on this wall, at least, who rescue people from burning buildings before they joined the FDNY. Oh, really? Wow. That's interesting. I know. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what did you, what medium did you... Uh, oil. Oil. Only black, white, and raw umber for the colors. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to throw in another statistic that I learned in writing up the stuff for here, but I think is really timely and important. So where the planes hit. If you were above where the planes hit, you had almost no chance. Mm -hmm. There were four people that made it up from the South Tower because the gods were with them. Below that, of all the people in the building, fewer than, and not counting the first responders who ran in, but people who worked there, fewer than 120 didn't make it out. More than 13,000 people safely evacuated in 100 minutes. Wow. We don't normally think right. about how many that. lives that these It's not counting saved. these guys, because right. these guys were going in and they saved them one at a time and they saved them 20 at a time. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, this guy here and his, you know, the guys he were with, they were right at the exit, standing in a row, moving. Mm -hmm. There's the exit right there. They are just moving the people mm -hmm. out of the building in front of them. And they just were holding their line. So, anyway. It's absolutely gorgeous, and I thank, thank you. you for doing it. Thank you.